All right, so welcome back to a new video, and this is going to be the Danganronpa discussion, the second game. But I'm pretty sure that in the end we'll end up talking about everything Danganronpa. It's been about a month or so that the game came out, and all three of us have actually finished it. You're probably thinking that I have multiple personalities, but that's not the case, because we have here Mario and Senkai from Excellent On Gamers as well. How are you doing, guys? Heyo. Thanks for the introduction. Yes. So, um, who was actually talking there is Mike, Mr. Aerodynamish, from his own yes. channel on YouTube. And it's, welcome back to terrible. Accent on Gamers, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me again. I uh, I am really looking forward to this talk because uh, I, I love this game. It's awesome. Right, it's been a while coming now, and uh, I'm really excited to talk about this because uh, we've been waiting for uh, basically each of us to finish playing it. We've all had our like old holdups and stuff, but now we're actually here. So, uh, what what can we start off with? What can we? Should we talk about the characters a bit first, or what do you guys say? I think first of all we should just discuss like yeah, our Spoiler overall ins impressions of Dying and Romper Two. So, did you think the game was good? Of course you did, but just do you think it was something better than the something first? something short about the game in general. You liked it, right? So all right, Mario. Let me, let me go first. Or, oh, or Mario. Want to? No, go ahead, Mario. All right, all right, I'll go first then. All right, so my overall impressions of the game were, uh, I thought it was great, of course, uh, but I think towards the ending a lot, I felt like uh, it had a cop out ending, and I I've been discussing this this with both Senkai and Mike before, uh, but you know up until that point, I actually thought the game was, I guess it, yeah, it's overall stronger than the first title. Uh, and uh, especially from like the character standpoint and uh, the setting is a lot more interesting actually for me. <clears throat> uh, but I, it all came down to the ending for me and uh, that part wasn't as... Uh, like it didn't imprint like such an impression as the hmm. first game did on me. Uh, because Just because of that small detail and uh, I guess uh, we'll switch over to a spoil... like uh, a spoiler part of our uh, discussion. Uh, where I'll get into detail why I thought the ending was a bit weaker. Uh, but if we're going to keep this spoiler free, I'll just stop at that. So, I thought this uh, whole episode would be like a spoiler episode. Is it? Or, or well, it may be at least the beginning part. We can, uh, we can make sure that people drop off whenever. Okay, cool. So I shall not comment what you just said, Mario. That's cool. So, Eros impressions? Yeah, I pretty much agree with Mario. <clears throat> I was uh, actually... Um, there also have been a lot of people that have been playing this game. Uh, and when I finished Danganronpa 2, my first impressions were... the awesome. It's, it's a six-episode or six-chapter game. I loved everything about it for about five and a half chapters. And then the final trial, I... I, I was really disappointed when I was playing it. I took a couple of days off the final final trial, like a weekend, I, I remember. Mm. And I finally delved into the final trial, and I was like, no, this is not the way I envisioned it. And I was really bummed out about, about the ending after a couple of days and now eventually weeks. Um, it's, you know, it subsided a little bit, but for me, I still felt that the first game was the overall better mystery and story. And while the second game had some great, great things about it, it I, I would say Danganronpa 2, it has better highs, but also better lows. And it just nearly edges out as not as good as the first game for me. Interesting. I feel the exact opposite, actually. Um, but I can't say too much without giving away too many spoilers, so I should wait before I um, <laughs> answer that. But... For me, the game was everything that the first game did, but better in every single way, and I absolutely love it. The thing for me was that, um, since you both been saying that you liked the game more than the first game up until a certain point, well, the thing for me was that that certain point made the game even better for me. So imagine how, like, if you play a game that's better than the first one, and then it gets even better. So for me, Danganronpa 2 was just crazy. And I will explain why I uh, like the ending so so incredibly much uh, whenever we discuss it later on. But uh, yeah, what a great game. Um, 
it, it was hmm, a bit more complex and also um, not as random. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I think uh, the overall game, the second game, uh, made a lot more sense and it wasn't as uh, um, episodic in a way. I thought the whole game felt very natural and since I played it like in less than a week, uh, it was a great experience for me. But uh, let's <laughs> save the ending for later, as I said. So, yeah. what do you guys want to discuss next? I guess I just want to uh, comment on something you said there in the end. Uh, the way you said the game felt episodic. Uh, I'm not too sure if I felt this that way about the first game. And uh, maybe you just felt uh, that way less about the second game because you're so used to the way they present the story by this point. Yep. That might be I, the case, actually. Because I, I feel like they presented the game in like just about the same way, like both of the games. Like it. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think it felt too much like it was split up or anything like that in either of the games, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. The formula is pretty much the same for both games, in terms of you know narrative, you know, with the with the chapters and the way you progress through either the school or the islands. Hmm. But, uh, but you backtrack a lot yeah. more in the second game, don't you? Because when, whenever you're done with a place in the first game, you never return. But you don't return. Or what, was that just game. was that just my my impressions? Because it felt like you were on the the whole island on the second game. But even then, you actually stayed in uh, in like the newer islands per chapter. Yeah, but you didn't have, you didn't return. But there was so much content in between the the chapters. It felt like every time a chapter ended, you actually did have a lot of fun with the game until the next chapter started. Um, of course, it was the same in the first game, but hmm. Yeah, you get my point anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a good idea to talk about the the upgraded gameplay for the second game. Once yeah. we've done that, then we can go into spoiler territory, I would say. There were so many things that they improved from the first game. I especially loved how they added the... First of all, like, the walking mechanic. I think <laughs> yeah, that really was nice cool. They added, because you basically had a hub world now, and uh, with uh, in the hub world you had uh, these areas that you explored in first-person view, which was the normal way of exploring in the first game. And uh, I just thought it added, like... Uh, a bit more size to the game, you know, because it felt like you were exploring more areas and uh, they were a bit spaced out from each other. It was really, really nice. Um, the thing is, it reminds me of the the terrible, in my opinion, um, overworld or what you say, hub world for Rayman Legends, uh, which I think is like <laughs> the worst hub in any platforming game um, <laughs> because it works the same. But the thing is. Uh, in this game, all the areas look different, and uh, the thing in Rayman Legends is that it looks the same. Imagine uh, w that thing in Danganronpa 2, and like how you g would get lost in if like every I island looked the same. Hmm. You go back and forth and <laughs> press up and down, and she everything just looks bad. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, it worked very well in this game, and. Uh, uh, it was nice. Also, the the graphics for his running animation and walking animation. Sometimes yeah. you had to walk to uh, to reach characters in between the locations because you can fast forward and make the character, uh, the main character, run in between the areas. Um, but sometimes I would walk just to see the characters because you got some dialogue if you met them up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I that, that I I didn't do that because. For the most part, I just wanted to save time and progress the story because I, I was really invested in what was going on. So I, I usually use the whole, uh, uh, you know, quick travel option. But then you guys missed out on one of the one of the mini games, right? The the, the Tamagotchi. No, yeah, no, no. Act, <laughs> that was cool. No, no, I was doing that too, but I wasn't okay. paying too much attention to it. So my my Monomi turned into a snake. Yeah, that's um, the base one. Yeah. I actually got a, a, a Monomi and a Monokuma, which got you a lot of Monokuma coins, which was really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, because I, I really didn't care about that part, to be honest. I, I, I acknowledge that it was there, and sometimes I checked in on it, but I really didn't do anything with it, so I just let it like fall into despair, and it just <laughs> pooped all over the room. and <laughs> I, It I was, died. Yeah, it did. 
and then I had to like yeah, come back to life. Did any one of you get to fail the uh, either of the meters? Like no. the uh, the despair meter or <laughs> the hope no. meter? Well, well I don't you, know. basically, if you uh, if you max out the despair meter uh, and you you are in that cocoon state, you you get a monokuma one. Oh, and awesome! If you're in the highest on the hope meter, you actually get a uh, you get a uh, a usami one. And then there's oh. I believe two or three different ones in the middle that I didn't get. I got the snake and then one more. <laughs> uh huh. Cool. cool. Uh, but you just should, you you don't have to, you, you shouldn't let them die. So you just need to clean up the poop and then yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. That's it, you know. Yeah, but it was a fun throw throw in, and I I like the the you know the eight bit style that they used in that yeah, yeah exactly. Game. I think I I love the presentation just overall and uh, like the, the overworld travels like all the new areas. That was a good thing about the whole island setting because they were able to do so many more new things. Uh, like in comparison to the school setting which was you know locked in in the building and everything you can really get too much variety but in this game you actually got like farms and you got uh, like marketplaces and everything like that it was really cool and uh, like I love that really yeah you got a carnival oh like a yeah, carnival place or whatever yeah I like really really enjoyed part. that mm -hmm. so but <clears throat> So aside from that, I really loved all the extra thing they added in the um, in the trial section as well. I really loved the uh, like what was it called again? The the mind uh, the logic dive. Yeah, the logic dive. I was gonna say mind dive. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Uh, the logic dive was really fun. Uh, a, a lot of people seem to complain about uh, how it it sort of drags things on rather than just adding to the gameplay. Uh, and you know like. It uh, strays away from the focus of the game, rather than uh, complementing it. And I'm not sure if I agree with that kind of uh, thinking, because I actually thought uh, the logic that was pretty fun, even though it was just time sync. And I really liked, um, all, like, what was that called when you cr like cross towards <laughs> the duel? I, 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 the rebuttal showdown. Yeah. Yeah. The, how do you guys know these names? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But those kind of things are really fun, and uh, like there are nice side diversions. They make the the whole talking part a lot more fun to follow because it's not just talk, 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 talk. It's actually some player interaction here and there. And for what it's worth, I think it actually does a good job of keeping you entertained. Yeah, I, I don't know if, how about for you guys, but I was playing. I posted the first game which I played on the uh, the, the medium difficulty. I played this one on me, the hardest. Yeah, same here. And it was crazy at the end. Like a rebuttal showdown, you had to time your slashes yeah, precisely. Yeah, I was just gonna Lord say that. It was stuff. so cool that you had to wait for... Like you could slash right ahead, but you had to wait for the next message to pop up. And right before yeah. the first one disappeared, you had to slash them both to, to save your, your cuts, you know. Yeah, yeah, but that that, that was uh, in the normal mode as well. Oh, I played good. the normal. Okay. And, uh, in, awesome. Eventually, you had to do that kind of stuff too, and uh, I thought it was fun because you actually had to be a bit more tactical about how you slashed and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Same <clears> for logic. Logic dive. It was like jumping sidewards. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I don't get me started on Hangman's Gambit because improved Hangman's Gambit because that was that was improved. awesome. Easy, Did you play it with touch yeah. controls or with the buttons? Yeah, with buttons. With buttons. Yeah, I, I played with buttons as well, but I felt like if you use touch... Yeah, I don't know if you can use touch controls. You can. You can, it's right? Yeah, it's way easier. I tried, but it wasn't as intuitive like you just tap on one and tap on the other. Uh, okay. it, it was some, a little bit different. So you have right. to tap twice. Basically, you tap once to move it to a place, and then you tap twice to like confirm the tap. Hmm. Okay. But anyway, the, the improved Hangman's Gavit, or whatever it was called... Uh, <laughs> it was really funny, in my opinion. It was awesome how you could place them strategically, and uh, yeah. and yeah. not destroy them to save them for. Like if you predicted the word pretty well, and you you knew the last letter was a T or whatever, you could try to save that and protect it. You know, <laughs> when yeah. letter yeah, letters were going. It just got huge and then it exploded or something. <laughs> it was so cool because oh, yeah, yeah. you you would like protect it for from all the other letters. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I I thought it was really fun. 
Yeah, definitely. And that is what I really enjoy about the gameplay of Danganronpa 2, is how it just progressed from the first game, and just in difficulty, it just stayed the same. In yeah. the same sport, you know, the cases in general, it's just more difficulty opposed to like Ace Attorney 2, which just resets at 1, and it gives you like a crappy yeah. newcomer case. That, yeah. That's true. I wanted to mention this as well, because it feels like this game picks up exactly where the first game leaves, so... Uh, it, it's basically just as hard as the fifth case. I really like did not case. feel that though, because everyone keeps saying that, and I and I, I don't see it really because the game does such a great job at being uh, its own title. Mm -hmm. Like it, even even at the end, like let's save that for for the spoiler part. But I mean, you could play this game without playing the first one and still have a really really great time. And the things that you would kind of need want to play the first game to to appreciate i think you would appreciate in it still in another way like you would you would think it would was pretty cool like even if we wouldn't play the first game first um i could see that actually and personally i had played the first game so it <laughs> i don't know for sure but i can really see someone being a huge fan of the second game without playing the first one i, I it's just the ending that makes it that pretty hard to swallow I guess maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Oof, it's too hard to say. Hey, they're both so awesome. You should play both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're meant to be played one after the other. It's like they're all, they're they're so connected. There's no point playing the first one without the second or the other way around. Really, and uh, it makes sense why it packaged it together in Japan. Now, especially like if you go back, like in retrospect, I feel like yeah, th they're meant to be in the same package. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, at least the, the PS Vita version was packaged together yeah. in the Super Danganronpa Reload. Although yeah, on PSP it was split up, but oh. but that's they, they feel really good. Yeah, really great. Uh, go very well hand to hand, hand to hand together. And uh, yeah, I, I I hope there's going to be a third game, not counting of course another episode which we'll talk about later on. But mm -hmm. I really hope there's going to be a third game and they add in some more crazy awesome gameplay things and I'm sure it's gonna be stuff. a third game yeah I mean yeah. They, they already they already showed I, th I think we talked about this before but uh, they already showed that they were working on the third game when they were teasing uh, another episode they showed another teaser for like oh the third game is in the works and then people got excited and you probably look that up right now if you guys want but yeah but I remember yeah so yeah yeah I see I've seen that so well, uh, we'll have to play the the waiting game and see uh, what's going to happen later. Well, you guys can play the waiting game, but I'm gonna play another episode while I wait. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, ah. I think it's time to get really into spoiler territory, right? So, yeah, otherwise we with characters and properly. cases and everything. Let's get to right. it. Right, right. So, what do you guys want to discuss first? Do we? Uh, how about we talk about the characters and we get into the cases because then we. I'm going to grab this amazing art book over here and take a look from the start at all the great things from Danganronpa 2. You can see all the chapters there yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. That's going to be great for this episode. Crazy yep. art book, huh? Yeah, yeah, I wonder who gave it to you. Hmm. Thanks a lot, Mike. It's. Yeah. I, I totally agree when you said that it's the best art book ever. You're supposed to be able to see um, executions for characters uh, who didn't die. In the yeah, actual that's game true. Well. Yeah, the, there's there's a few uh, uh, drawings and hints at uh, certain characters they wanted to execute, but they didn't, uh, which is uh, which is really nice. To they see. wanted it's... to execute. You made it sound so mean. It's like they wanted <laughs> to kill off their characters, even the good ones. Well, I can definitely think of a couple of characters in both games that did not deserve to live. Yeah, that. To other ones. <laughs> you mean well, like was... a certain soda brand? Coca-Cola, maybe? I uh, know, but soda. Jesus, goddamn. It's 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 soda and uh, what's it called? Yasuhiro. Uh, Yasuhiro, yeah. Yeah. Fuck Those these guys, guys, man. Fucking Yasuhiro, like, seriously. I guess they have a trend where they don't want to like kill off the most useless character or something like that. <laughs> so they always leave like people like Yasuhiro and uh, Soda in there just to mess with really, them. I really liked Soda though. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense why they should li live. That's the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. It it, it kind of felt to me that 
and this is actually what I was thinking that Chapter 5 was going to be. I had a feeling it was going to be like a crazy Sonya versus Soda. Uh, he tried to rape me, I killed him, and now uh, you can execute me chapter. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, cool. That was not the case, but we got a very awesome other Chapter 5, but we'll talk about that later. Chapter 5 was amazing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it really was. That's, that is the best case of the both games, I would say. 6, though, so fucking amazing. But yeah, oh, anyway. Don't, don't start, thank you. <laughs> oh, well, okay, so, yeah, the characters, though. Let me just tell you guys which my favorite characters were. Uh, and I'll, I, sh- I guess we should go with, like, top three or something. Uh, and I'm gonna exclude Nagito because we all know he's like the best one. So we'll, let's just like put him in our reserved spot where he's he's probably everybody's number one. So who cares? Absolutely. Uh, so aside Definitely. from Nagito, then all right, uh, I'd say my favorite characters were uh, Fujihiko, uh, Sonia, and uh, who could be number three. Number three is a tough one. I guess I liked Mikan before she went all crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's for some good choices. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if you don't count Nagito, uh, Wait, my I'm favorite. Got... Bam. My favorite characters for the second game would have to be Chiaki, Akane, and Mikan as well. Yeah. I really like those three. I just. What, if I didn't nobody say Gundam here because I, I forgot all about him but Gundam yeah, he's, yeah. he, he would have been like number 4 or 5 something hmm. Gundam was my favorite character if you don't count Nagito because I like he, he sticked around for so long I, I'm, I'm so sorry he didn't make it the whole way but um, but he was such a great character throughout the game because a lot of times I was thinking about that actually uh, when they start talking some characters don't say anything like they could go through um, 15 minutes of dialogue and some characters don't pop up but Gundam was always there saying something cool uh, yeah. he was always around and he made some great great lines and his <laughs> for Dark Davis of Destruction was just fun yeah. as well and his he name had... and his looks and everything I, I just yeah. love that character seriously yeah um, uh, I would I would say it. She was. I was thinking she was going to be an absolutely great character, but she passed away very quickly, and that was Peko. Yeah, Peko was awesome. Uh, although I hear from both of you guys that you weren't too big of fans of uh, her case, basically. Yeah, that's true. So, I was very <laughs> disappointed by the reveal and to yeah. see her go on. That that made the second case, in my <clears throat> opinion, the least favorite one of yeah. the game. But what made that case good was actually uh, the whole relationship between Fujihiko and Peko. Yeah. True. Uh, that's like True. The, the whole ending, like the whole reveal and everything wasn't too grand, and like the way she killed uh, Ma- Mahiru, Mahiru, whatever yeah. she was. Yeah, called. and how how uh, Fujihiko got penalized as well was just crazy. I I was playing that that case at work, and <laughs> I got so upset, and everyone asked me like, <laughs> "How are you doing?" <laughs> I was so fucking angry that he got uh, killed as well, but he came back, so that's good. Yeah. But man, I was so fucking angry, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was almost afraid to die as well. Like, but I, because I thought it would weird, because that never happened in Danganronpa before. That yeah, it was so fucking jump. unfair. I mean, he he was like um, one of my favorites, and I should go on with my list. My second favorite would be him, and then uh, the third one would be either Soda or Nekomar Nidai because he was <laughs> he was also just like Gundam, one of those characters who uh, were around the whole game, and he would just keep keep getting back from the dead two times, <laughs> talking about shit. Um, yeah. yeah, that Dick was fun Dick as well. Shit. Oh, God, um, yeah. But yeah, Gundam, uh, Fujihiko, and Nekomaru Nidai for sure. Yeah. Um, Soda's cool and everything, but not not as cool as Nidai. From my first impression, though, which character, uh, like, initially was the most in- most interesting for you guys? Because I remember the first one I uh, I hung out with on my free time in Danganronpa Two was Nekomaru. Yeah, I went, like straight, I, went straight I, went. To, I went straight to Nagito and Chiaki. Yeah, yeah, Nagito for sure. But uh, uh, then it was Soda, actually. 
for me. And were you afraid that those characters were gonna die at some point? Hmm. No. Not at you, all. You, you knew you knew Soda was gonna live. I I yeah. To be honest, like <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be serious here. I knew I knew because like because that stupid character from the first game, which I can never remember the name, but we were discussing him earlier. Um, since he survived, I knew for sure the Soda would too. <laughs> so yeah. Strange. Uh, for some reason, I really had the feeling that Chiaki and, and Nagito would go all the way end game, uh, thus making the epic uh, reveal in the fifth case uh, all the more shocking for me. They both of them died in the same case for you. <laughs> but uh, I, I was I was hoping for Mikan to make it because I I don't know I just enjoyed her character mm -hmm. until uh, they uh, they showed what yeah what they did in case three yeah. And then I was like, yeah, okay, you can now go. But, uh, yeah, I was that hoping was... for her to go very far. I love the reveal with Mikan, though, in case 3, which connected really nicely to the end. Even though I'm not too bad, uh, big of a fan of the ending of this game, uh, I still like how they connected uh, Mikan's case to the ending with the whole remembering disease. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I definitely agree with that. Um, so, uh, that, that was really well done. Mm hmm Damn, I can't wait to discuss the ending because I thought it was so fucking good, but we should save that to last, and we have to discuss that uh, chapter 2 some more. Um, yeah. Because Just uh, just for out of interest, which was what's your least favorite character out of the Danganronpa 2 Least cast? favorite character? Um, Hiyoko, or whatever her, her name was. The one with the kimono? Yeah. Yeah, she for really sure. Cool. She, was, she was annoying, no, I... really not interesting at all. Look, I, I'm just kidding, because uh, I like, I didn't, look, I, she made me disgusted for sure, but the one that I really disliked, because she didn't add anything to anything, was Mahiru. Yeah, just she was, my, she was going to be my pick as well, and as well as Ibuki, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> Ibuki, Ibuki was just, fun though. <laughs> she was funny, but uh, she didn't really contribute a lot in the end, she, she had a great personality, but in the but, end. But wait, Mayuri, who was that? It was the, the Mahiru, the photograph. Mahiru. Oh yeah, right. She, she was pointless. Who got too. axed out of in the second case already? I should really go back and do those social links, but man, she was yeah. pretty boring as well. Because I didn't do all the social links. I mean, I I just finished two. I think I finished Sonia's and I finished Gundam's. Yeah, I, let's see. I finished a, a few. I finished Chiaki, Gundam. Um, let's see, Mikan, and Nagito. Yeah. But uh, the other game, the first game, I maxed them all out in the end. So in one playthrough? Also, uh, no, not in one playthrough. Just uh, um, reloading each chapter and then doing all the social links. Oh, nice. But for the second game, I didn't really see a lot of free time, and I wasn't really into reloading the chapters again and doing the trials. So I decided, well, skip it until island mode. That was a really yeah. nice thing, though, that I really liked about the second game. There was not as much as much free time. There was actually things going on at all times. It felt like so. It, the free time was when they were waiting for something, and not when just yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it felt like there was actually something gonna come up really soon whenever you had the free time. So, but I don't feel that that was too different from the first game either, actually. I feel like the first game did that just as well as the second game. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but in, instead of waiting for the uh, for the kill, uh, the start of the chapter, in um, in the second game you had free time uh, in the chapters when you were waiting for something to happen, like in the uh, the strawberry tower, <laughs> whatever it was called. Yeah. Uh, you had some free time there as well because you were waiting out uh, some stuff in there. You were waiting hmm. to die after starvation. Yeah, this is where I maxed out Gundam. Yeah, me too. Yeah, same go. here, same here. Oh my god, what's wrong with this? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Something about Gundam just strikes our attention when we're in the Strawberry Tower. But there was, in, in the first game, you had, I believe that it was either the second, or I believe it was the second case, where there was just five pieces of free time very quickly after yeah, each other. Yeah. Where you could just go in there, max out all the characters, except for the ones that already died in the first case, and that's where I just reloaded right before like the 
final two chapters. I just reloaded that case over and over, maxed them all out, and then went for the for the finishing uh, clever to finish the game. That's convenient. Maybe they put it there to make it easy for you to max yeah, out. Yeah, I, I can really see that. And then of course I found out that you actually have that an, an island mode or school mode in the first game where you can just leisure off and then just do free time whenever you want. I want yeah, to play that aren't... mode. Those aren't supposed to have the same social links, are they? We're calling them social links, even though it's not Persona. Yeah. No, it's the, it's the same. You spend the same free time, but if you do island mode, you actually get additional endings with that particular character. Awesome. Uh, cool. That's only in that mode, or the same goes for school mode. But um... Very cool. Anyway, about social links, I, I think... Uh, <laughs> I have the feeling it's the same as the term Metroidvania now. Like, we're using social link and everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The same sure. as Metroidvania shouldn't be a genre, but it is, so... Yeah. It's totally an official genre. I mean, it's a word, right? <laughs> no, but yeah. yeah. It's funny how that goes sometimes, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, social links, I can I can get behind that. But uh, great, great cast of characters. Uh, honestly, in both games. Um, Which just... one would you say is the better cast, though? Ah, <sighs> oh, that's tough. That's tough. I, I I would I would still go for the first game because there were just, at least for my feeling, all characters in the first game had more to offer, mm-hmm. in terms of you know adding to the story, and yeah. there were just a couple of characters. Again, it's it has to do with the better highs, the better lows in the second game. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Like the overall cast was better in the first game, but the characters that were really good in the second game crushed like the entire cast in the first game. Yeah. I feel, N- I feel Nagito like, was <laughs> just too good, seriously. Yeah, I feel like a group, the first cast is way better, but if you uh, put them like separately, the second cast has better like units, basically. So yeah. like yeah, separately the second cast is better, but as a group, the first cast is way better. Yeah, that is that, that is that's that, that in not in in general how I feel about the entire Danganronpa one versus Danganronpa two discussion, mm. and. Uh, yeah, I just uh, just a great cast of characters, and um, yeah. All right, so you guys want to talk some uh, some trials now and some chapters? Sure, sure. Yeah, let's go case by case. Yeah, let's do that. So, what do you guys think about the first case? Because the first case was all about uh, Byuka, uh, I mean Byakuya taking over as the leader, and then he gets killed, and. Uh, it's, I thought the case was really <clears throat> like it was probably the most complicated out of all of them, uh, like at least the first three ones. I thought it was incredibly simple, and it reminded me very much of the first cases in every Phoenix Wright game, where like I knew from the start that the cook was the <laughs> was the killer. I was okay. I was one hundred and ten percent sure uh, because he felt so fucking out of place, and he was doing all these uh, weird jokes. All the time. He reminded me really much of uh, the Nine Man in 909, the guy okay. who gets killed. The, the, he he was super similar to that guy in my opinion, and I felt like he he's gonna die in a second. So I, I suspected him throughout the whole case, and when it was over, I just felt meh, whatever. Just 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 to reiterate, that's right, people. You're listening to this. We better assume you finished 999. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but these are spoilers for like the first 40 minutes. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the first 30, 40 minutes. No or worries first there, five people. minutes in the iOS port. Well, that, that depends <laughs> yeah. on how long you're stuck with the first puzzle. Precisely. I was it stuck really... six hours, so who knows? Yeah, just I just wanted to throw that out there. But uh, that's interesting, actually, because with <laughs> Danganronpa 1, I was extremely on point with all the cases. I... Uh, you know, not from the start, but you know, during investigation, I was like, "Yeah, this is going to happen." Right. And everything turned out to be, except for the fourth case, which was very hard to solve, as they never really actually solved that one in the fourth case. Yeah. But with with the first case, I was like, "Who who can it be?" You know, there's so many people who who just you know stuck out to me. Uh, you know, like why was Paco not not there? Uh, then there was Fujihiko who didn't take place in the party. Yeah. And in honestly, the cook, you know, he he had some some questionable things about him. But um, 
I was not pegging him to be like the, the killer. I, I did hmm. see the stuff coming from a mile away. There was that he was stabbed underneath the floorboards and uh, all that crazy stuff. Hmm. But uh, I was actually surprised by by two things. One that I did not predict the killer, and secondly, is to see uh, the fat Biakia just perish <laughs> so easily. Yeah, it, that was a big surprise though. Shocked. That was that was really shocking because, and I think this this is what we'll get into at the end when we discuss the ending, and I'll give you my theory on how I was going to think that it was going to play out. Mm. But the, if you guys listen to that, then it is very shocking to see that I saw Yakia die <laughs> because I had not I did not expect that at all. But great case, I really enjoyed the first case. Yeah, and also I uh, I like how the whole uh, connection to who that character really was comes to play later yeah that was fun but I want to add something about uh, what you said Senkai about uh, uh, the cook oh god I can't remember his name why is it so hard with the names Teru Teru huh? yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> right. Teru Teru uh, yeah because you, you, you mentioned he looked strange and acted strange yeah. I think that reminded me a lot about Hifumi from the first game the fat nerd oh yeah yeah so mm, I, I right. didn't expect him in that kind of way. Hmm. Uh, I can see that now when you're when you're saying it, but I didn't feel it when I was playing it. No. Hmm. But yes, yeah, so, but I wasn't expecting him to. I mean, some somehow I was because he was in the kitchen and you know, kid the kitchen and, had and a knife like, was missing sharp, yeah. and you know, <laughs> I don't there know. Was, there was sharp utensils and stuff, but uh, but in the end, like I. I thought that was a bit too obvious also, so I started doubting myself because I didn't think they'd go for such an easy, you know, prey and... So in the end, I, who did I think was the culprit, really? Hmm. I, yeah, I, I really wasn't sure. I guess that was the thing because I didn't really know who could have done it. Uh, who does this? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, fuck. It's uh, but yeah, I, I was expecting Nagito for a while, but then I figured, because in the beginning, I have to be honest, I thought he was gonna be Makoto or something like that, so I figured yes, they true. can't kill him off because that's Makoto, um, unless you have something like in grand in mind, and so I was really confused throughout the whole thing. I couldn't really tell who was who, like who was a murderer and how things transpired. So I was just really interested to see how we'd crack the case together, so I was basically just tagging along the whole group and seeing how they solve it. Right. Definitely. But yeah, overall, I really, really liked uh, the first case. You know, it set the mood for what was to come. Um, and for me personally, it dipped a little bit with the second case. Yeah. The highlight of the first uh, trial was just uh, Nagito's reveal. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. yeah, that was so awesome. And it feels like they set everything up just to show off Nagito's true colors. Yeah, being, uh, it was so cool. Like you, you got to see that character so so early in the game, and he just kept being so amazing through all the cases. Yeah, he actually thought he was gonna be a collected guy because he always seemed so helpful and then like spot on with all the clues and everything like that. And he, that's why he also came off as. Uh, being Makoto because Makoto was all, always you know cracking the case in the first game. Yeah, and also uh, his name, you know, he's called Naegi Makoto, you know, Naegi called... To, Nagito. Oh. That that's what I thought all all the time. <laughs> it, his a... name is is it's perfect, you know. His name is an anagram for yeah uh, for, for Makoto Naegi. So it's yeah. really crazy uh, that they just. Yeah, uh, didn't do anything with it. I, I, yeah. This is again. We'll get to that. But uh, but it's all, it. yeah, it's obviously just to throw us off. Yeah. All of it was just to throw us off. Seriously, and they even mentioned it in the game. I think Monokuma was like, "Oh, you totally remind me of that one person," and uh, it was obviously referring to Makoto and everything. It just hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, but his like his sudden change of character was just a highlight and I really liked also how uh, uh, Teru uh, Teru whatever he's called uh, 
like his reasons for wanting to get off the island was his own mother and uh, it was really sad so yeah definitely it was, it was sort of I don't know if like he did kill a person but you did feel sorry for him because he didn't do it out of spite or anything like that he was just really worried so true I loved his thick accent though also <laughs> yeah <laughs> when he went crazy that, that's I don't know how it was in uh, in English, which is something that we'll have to highlight. I played it in Japanese voice acting. I believe you guys played it on English, right? Yeah. yeah. He he got really bad in Japanese. Like <laughs> you know, you have his Japanese speech. I I I can't you know, understand Japanese all that well, but he got into this really, really you know scummy type of you know Japanese accent where it was just like you know very boorish and just. Like you know, like some 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 degenerate character. <laughs> that yeah. was really funny. He just started blabbering in the. Uh, well, he did like have an accent where he sounded like he came from. I don't I don't really know what uh, region or anything like that it was really, but uh, he, in the end, like in the very end, he just started blabbering. Like it was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. like it was really d funny during the panic panic time action. He started calling out like things like Paris Hilton and April. Yeah, like, what the fuck was up with that? <laughs> I really love me. Yeah, I remember that. That was funny. <laughs> Crazy character. Yeah, but he was really good, and I liked him as a character in the end. Even though he was perverse and stuff, it was nice to have him around. Yeah, I really, like Mario mentioned, I really figured that he was going to be the next, uh, the next Hifumi, the the ultimate fanfic writer, as being like this this uh, this this pervy, horny character. Yeah. Hmm. Which uh, in the end, uh, somebody else took his place, and uh, that was Soda. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking pervert. Oh, you remember in in chapter two when he was waiting for Sonia, <laughs> and she <laughs> she got there in this um, full full dress. <laughs> Swimsuit, yeah, it was so good. Oh yeah, scuba diving thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, he still thought it was hot. And like, you know, oh, you man, know how so Soda has a surprised face, and he has like a yeah. totally oh. wrecked face. <laughs> <laughs> and the second version was the one uh, when he saw Sonia, and I laughed my ass off. Ah, that was that was that was a uh, that was a great uh, great diversion <laughs> in in the second case, just before the whole stuff went wrong. Is that whole bathing suit thing? Yeah. Of course, you had to have some fan service in there. Fan service? <laughs> you saw me con falling during the first chapter. Oh, wait. No, <laughs> the thing with me con. <laughs> the epic spread. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Oh my god, that thing. It's like food all over her thighs. Everything's so crazy in this game, so I, that really felt natural. It was. It wasn't out of place at all for me, at least. I just. I, I, I just know. laughed at it and kept going forward, you know. I hear Dustin Christ is complaining about it a lot, but I don't know. They really they really spiced up the, the pervertedness of this. I don't know if you guys have seen this event. I believe it was only unlocked if you had certain items in your inventory. Hmm. But there was this, this side event with like Mahiru and Hiyoko where they were like bathing each other. Yeah. In the, in the like shower? An, another, you know, in the second chapter, I believe. There was another of those insane moments where I was like, yeah. I don't believe More I want to see Hiyoko naked, because she's such a disgusting person. Yeah, that's true. And it, it was covered up with a lot of soapy bubbles and stuff like that. But, uh, of course it was. But yeah. Crazy. It's, it's funny, because the first impressions I got from Hiyoko was that, ah, oh, she probably stinks or something. <laughs> and then turns out she, like, <laughs> she got really renowned for stinking, because she didn't take off her clothes. Or she couldn't. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, let's just keep moving to the second case because we were getting stuck otherwise. Uh, but yeah, the second case, uh, I thought uh, it, it didn't top the first case, obviously, because I thought the first case was really strong. Uh, and uh, you guys seem to think that it's overall one of the weakest, if not the weakest, uh, cases. Well, the thing with the second chapter for me was that it felt like like a tool-assisted speedrun because every single time I got the choice to pick yeah. something I, I did it like in, in one or two seconds I, I saw the options I picked the right one just ahead yeah. and I mean I was playing it hard and it felt like I knew that chapter <laughs> so well because 
Um, like I didn't pre predict it at first, but um, up until the choices you get to make, um, you were so you got to know so much about. Yeah, it, it like spoiled itself somehow. Yeah. It was very very easy for me uh, <laughs> because there are chapters I I'm not I'm not super good at this game, but but that chapter like <laughs> I I didn't get anything wrong at all. No. It was crazy. On top of that, it was just only one room to investigate, basically. I, I don't think there was any... Oh yeah, wait, you actually had that cool game as well. Uh, because the game told... Yeah, exactly, was that's that... why it was so easy. The game... Like, oh, there was yeah. a game that uh, recreated the whole murder scene. Uh, I was actually not a big fan of that. You the... weren't a big fan? No, I, I, I thought it bogged down the chapter. With this whole, you know, case with the with the murder girls and it was uh, very out of place because that would be yeah. nice if they put it in a chapter about Chiaki or something. They uh, actually forgot about the subplot as well with the whole murder in the school. Whatever happened to that? Like how how does yeah? It, it was basically when they hung out before they went crazy. So it was so when they, they ever first at school. Then the whole stuff happened, and my hero. Yoko, Mikan, they were all friends. They were all part of that group. Uh, and then, you know, they, they bullied Fujiko's sister. Yeah. And, and then she died, and then uh, there was revenge. Yeah. And uh, this is basically how it went down. But, um, yeah, just that whole side story, and, and it was, you know, pretty bogged down. And it, it, at least it bogged down my experience with the story. I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, let's move on the game. And then, you know, the murder and stuff happened, which I felt was a little bit too slow-paced. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the whole case was too obvious and too slow. And it, you were sort of ex just... You just wanted it to end. Yeah. And that's why I say the whole, uh, like, uh, reveal in the end between Peko and Fujihiko, their relationship, that's why I think it's so important. Wait, I, I don't think I can hear you guys anymore, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> we're not saying anything. No, we're here. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> yes, alright. <laughs> just cut that out, Senkai, alright? Uh, I know, but... Cool. <clears throat> so, so, yeah, and that's why I think the whole um, part with Fujihiko and Peko in the end was so good, because I guess that was the only good part about the chapter in reality. Now that I think about it, yeah. of course it would stand out. It, it was a little bit out of place in relationship to the case, but looking back at it, it was the best part of the case, yeah. except, of course, for the obvious swimsuit part, which, uh, yeah. Mm. I was playing one hand at that chapter. Of course you were. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you, you played with one hand because you don't need two hands to play a visual novel, isn't that right? Of course, of course. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else. Yes. Jeez. No, but yeah, now that you mention it, it's really... It's really a sloppy chapter. Huh. <laughs> okay, cool. So, chapter three. Alright, chapter three. Uh, it's here. This. Wait, what chapter is this again? That's the one with this me, Khan, the... right? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. Where they, they got this this illness. Yes. yes. By Monokuma. And then, of course, um, the, in my opinion, least contributing character, Ibuki. Yeah. And uh, sadly, Yoko, as collateral damage, went away. Yeah, that's sad. I'm gonna miss Yoko not. Uh, but yeah, jeez. Yeah, this chapter was actually interesting, because I loved the disease part. Uh, like, it added a fun element to the whole case, uh, especially towards the end. Uh, but mostly just seeing all these characters go even more nuts was fun. Nagito, especially. Getting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. He starts lying about, oh, I know who the, um, who the, what we call the spy is or whatever. It's Byakuya. He died though. And he went all spasmic. <laughs> Everything was crazy. Uh, but yeah, and he has this it, crazy it, laugh in the English dub as well. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, I, I really like the fact that the uh, the casts were actually split up. Mm -hmm. So you had one in the hospital and one outside. You knew that there was going to be some shit happening, of course. Yeah. yeah. And um, the way that whole murder part happened, it was very tense. You know how Hajime, the main character, saw it on the screen. Yeah. And I, I really liked the murder of it. It was really, really dark. 
Yeah, it was clever. Yeah, uh, definitely. <clears throat> the, but I just feel a bit like um, they could, they could have added like another layer of mystery to it somehow, because uh, I feel like because <clears throat> what basically happened was that uh, Mikan recorded herself in one room that looked just like the murder or the crime scene, uh, and then like acting out the murder to make it l look like a suicide of some sort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. It feels like uh, they caught on too quickly that she was recording herself. And I feel like they should have added one more thing to that point to make it like a bit more mysterious. Otherwise, I feel, I feel like the whole thing was really cool. And yeah, it it does what what um, uh, justice for all does when it like completely spoils itself. Like you're you're about to find find out about it, and then the game just tells you. Yeah. And it's so so weird because sometimes you don't even know uh, what's going on, and a character just starts telling you everything. You're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> that that's weird. And that happened in that case, and in not in any other case that I can yeah. remember. But but yeah, they gave it away really easy. Yeah, and Mika acted a bit like she was too honest about it in the end. Because she kept like blabbering about how they should forgive her and everything. Like yeah, that, that. <laughs> I I hated that part seriously. Oh, I know. Yeah, just just you know. Instead of say, saying it wasn't me, she said, "Please forgive me." Like yeah. a, a half an hour before they they got to decide it was yeah. her. They didn't yeah. even excuse uh, accuse her. She just like went, "Oh, please forgive me." <laughs> It is it is interesting where the second case case is the, all the way up until the reveal is pretty mad. Then the third case, everything is great about the case except for the reveal. <laughs> it's just like a whole reversal. Yeah. yeah. But there but, was uh, there was that part that was good about the reveal with the whole connection to the last chapter, which but th that's the thing like you didn't get that until you finished the game. Yeah, that's true. That's they they, they put in a lot of hints for the overall mystery. Mm. Uh, which uh, Hint? You, when you finally finished it, yeah. you know it became interesting. But uh, but yeah. I also feel like uh, she was being such a tease in the end, where after they like uh, like decided on like that she was a murderer and everything, uh, she kept like teasing them about, oh, I know exactly who yeah. that secret Asian is. The person is around in this room, and it's like, come on. Dick, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that that was nice. You can't give everything away, but uh, I, I like the third case more than the second case. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. Not as strong as the first one, but I feel like uh, it's it's better than the second one. Definitely, yeah. Some some parts are cooler than the first, I guess. Like yeah, and the investigation part high. was a lot better as well. Not not just yeah. not just the trial, but. The investigation part was very good in the third case, I think. Yeah, it I was think the a lot of fun. Was stronger in the first one, but the the investigation part, which I'm usually not a big fan of, I'm never a big fan of the investigation parts. I just want to get to the like really exciting parts without even knowing <laughs> stuff sometimes. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> I I feel like the investigation was fun because there were like a double murder going on here, both Ibuki and Hiko. Yeah, that was cool. Died so. really. And uh, and the way they like revealed how they died was really smart as well. Especially Hiyoko's murder. I just want to say something quickly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't know if it was just me or um, I was thinking Sonia was the killer in pretty much every case, like at at some time for for only a minute, sometime or just for a longer time. W one <laughs> one moment in every case, I felt like she could be the killer. Was it because she was too pure for you, Senkai? Something, I don't know, but did you feel the same? Did you suspect no. her any time at all? I actually like had this, 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 I don't know, sometimes it was how she said stuff that just gave it away. I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe she did do it this time, and then I'm like, <laughs> nah, it can't be the case. Yeah, no, but that's this. exactly what I mean. I felt the same way. I never ever suspected her. I'm mm. like Soda, I, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. But yeah, she seemed too cool, and I was hanging out with her the most in the beginning, like the social links. And oh, I see. And so, like, I don't know, she, she came off as too 
cool of a person to actually commit a murder, which would be the perfect sort of alibi for not being a murderer, but... Yeah, uh, my yeah, thoughts man. exactly, but... <laughs> yeah. What, whatever, man, she was cool, so I, I just didn't need, like, suspect her at all. <coughs> but yeah, Let's so... See. Are we gonna continue through the fourth then? Yes. Just quickly, we want to say as well that chapter three was was harder than the second case by a lot. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah For yeah. for Mike, you played us hard on hard as well. Um, yeah. The third case was challenging. Here's where they started to step up the uh, yeah. gameplay elements as well. Mhm. Mm Definitely. Right. So to the fourth chapter then, which I think was probably. It, it was interesting, like most interesting in a way where it changed the settings completely and a lot of the stakes changed a lot. They basically changed up the whole rule book of the game. Uh, it was the one with the uh, the strawberry. Strawberry, yeah. 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 That was great because that's like... Uh, it's What's the same with the first game? that the, it's And it's also the same with Kingdom Hearts. The things that I really like in the game is not the game overall, it's, it's those things when they start... Uh, getting to know more things about what's outside of the whole game, you know? Yeah. Um, just like the last case in the first game, and also here, the fourth fourth case in the second game. Amazing. Yeah. I really love to hear more about, like, what's happening in the big picture. Yeah, because so, you're, you're sort of on the brink of revealing everything now, like, on the fourth chapter. Yeah, exactly. So, so that was, like, that was really, really, really good for me. Just like I'm not too fond of the Disney stuff in Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> I'm all about the the other stuff, but organization thirteen and what? Yeah, so awesome. Right. I, I really like the build up to the murder. How you uh, played as Nagito or Nagito? Yeah, for yeah. A that while. was great as well. And that zero escape uh, murder or zero escape <laughs> puzzle room? You actually, you were able to skip that if you wanted to. Really? Nah, I didn't go for it. Yeah, I didn't do it either. Yeah. You could skip it if you want to. They're like, "Are you sure you want you want to skip this? Like, are you sure you're not man enough to handle it?" Wow. Yeah. And when it challenges your manhood like that, you just don't want to like step down. You you want to. It was pretty it. easy, except like uh, the last code. Yeah. The last code. I, I didn't was know pretty, where to input the code at first, like because you had to input the code, and then I realized, uh, well, I, can, <laughs> like, I had to look it up. But then when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, I had to put it there." It's so fucking obvious. Yeah, yeah, I really, really like that room. It's just, uh, it, it really reminded me of Zero Escape, of course. Yeah. And just, uh, just, uh, you know, again, they did this whole teasing thing where you were playing in from the perspective of Nagito, and he knew stuff, but he just didn't say it, or they <laughs> show, didn't show it in the game. Yeah. Uh, and they actually cut away to Hajime when you know he's he got that file, and I really like that part. Yeah. When when Nagito gets that file as a reward for beating. The whole uh, 999 game. That's when sort of shit hits the fan and stuff gets really real. Yeah. Because yeah. Nagito gets to learn all of the truth, and uh, like Damn. he doesn't conceal it to anybody. Chapter four is so good. Seriously, now that I'm thinking about it, the investigation, the trial, and most of all, as I said earlier, the things around that. It's so good. Yeah. The murder was hard to uh, like to reveal like you didn't know how to where to start with the whole murder because uh, first of all you had that elevator thing which was a real hassle to figure out and you didn't you didn't really consider how the structure was built I, I like, got that from the start though yeah I, I know there was gonna be something like going on with that because yeah. the doors didn't open at the same time that's yeah. another reference to justice for all um, I knew what was going on, but I had no no way to explain it to the game. <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, I knew it, but the characters didn't, so... You had to wait. It was, there was one part in this entire game where I was just stuck. And that was when you had to point out where the hexagon was. I had no fucking idea. I kept clicking everywhere. Ah, uh, yeah. Really? It it's the one. It's the one with the picture. Wait, the one where they show the outside. Yeah, it's like the building, oh, and you right, have to select right. yeah. which part was had, the hexagon yeah, part. Was I was fucking retarded. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. got like five wrongs on that or something because yeah, I, I clicked, I clicked the right, the right spot almost, very, very close the first time, and that was wrong. So I, I didn't want to yeah, press exactly. that place again. So I pressed. 
another four wrong places before I try to may maybe I just press presses a little bit too much to the left and that was right so yeah, I, exactly. I just face palmed you know <laughs> you knew where yeah. to press but when you pressed it you pressed slightly wrong so you had to like you were like oh well go figure I'll just try another place yeah but then it was this the same place you pressed at the start it was so right. strange because it happened to me too another just... shout out to justice for all that happens a lot in that game too yeah yeah I had a, f a few times <laughs> in logic as well where I tried like a, a statement and I didn't shoot the statement correctly. I shoot next to it, and I was like, "Hmm, I thought this was it. Well, let's try something else." I tried, 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 and tried, and I was like, "Oh, I misshot it." So I was on the right track anyway. Yeah. Added a couple of times. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'm glad we all had that same problem then. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really, awesome. really part. Hopefully, part our of listeners part. can uh, relate to. Yeah. <laughs> what if everybody it... in the whole world had that problem? Jeez. Yeah, most likely. But in, in general, the, the fourth case, um, this is where I guessed it correctly very early on. Because when Gundam's uh, this four divas <laughs> were touching the button of the elevator, yeah. I knew that they were going to do something with the self-destruct button. Awesome, because I, I, I totally forgot about that. Ah, I really, that really sense. forgot about that. And when yeah. they mentioned it, I was like, oh, that's right. So... I, I knew that something was going to happen with that, uh, and you know they 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 gave that away for me. Where, where for you it was the cook part. For me this was the fourth case, and right. I didn't really care for for Nakamura's return as the robot. So, uh, and to see Gundam being the killer, I was a, I was a little bit disappointed by by this this case. It's it's in the middle. It's not the but worst. You know, it's not uh, the worst. one of the pictures, like uh, the artwork when they're fighting, which uh, was also in the credits, which I uploaded to Facebook, if you remember. Uh, when Gundam does this amazing pose, uh, yeah. I love it. Really, yeah. it's a great picture. I, I think because both of those characters, the reason why Gundam killed uh, Nekomaru wasn't because, uh, I mean, he wanted to kill or anything a like very that. Very easy target, Gallant. though. <laughs> yeah, but he he sort of did it for everyone else, wasn't that the case? Or did I misunderstand? Because I feel like Gundam did this because he knew what. Uh, where everything was leading up to. Yeah, yeah, of course. Nikamaru, so they sort of decided this together by sort of... Yeah, they didn't have any food or anything, and also Gundam was never the bad guy. Never. No, so. no exactly. So he, did, he didn't do it because he wanted to hurt anyone, he just did it because he wanted to save everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, the, that's definitely true. It was... Uh... Everything leading up to the case, it, it was very nice. It just, it just gave it away in... Uh... But still, I, I really enjoyed it, and just the fact that it really started to propel the events forward yeah. for what was leading up to, you know, what's coming next. That's, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so for that reason, I, I actually like it for the similar reasons as well, because it progressed the story so much. Uh, not so much because um, I, I thought the uh, case was the strongest or anything like that. But just a lot of story stuff going on. And I did like the change of um, <clears throat> like yeah, environment and such, and I thought the whole uh, fun house was a cool thing to walk around in, especially when you could see like a huge Sakura Ogami. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Was awesome. By the way, Sakura <laughs> Ogami is such a <laughs> such a fun name. Seriously. <laughs> oh. Mike, you know, right? It's it's regarding to Sakura Wars, right? Yeah, yeah. the main character is called Ogami, and the other main character or like the icon for the series is called Sakura. Sakura so, which just just to throw it out there, uh thank you guys for sending me a copy of Sakura Wars one and two. I got it yesterday. So yeah. uh, awesome. Can't wait to play it. You are welcome. Uh, Mario, was that your I'll... copy or did you or no, another, another one? one. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I got another one. Oh. At least uh, it was shipped from Japan, so uh, Mario, unless you're located in Japan <laughs> Which I am of course See, I've been talking to you about this. I am in Japan. You guys so, just don't know about So, Mike, did you check out the uh, the incredible reversible cover art for, for yes. that version? Yeah, it looks yeah. so good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, let's I let's get back to the, yeah. <laughs> to the real just, deal. Just going back to this whole statue of Sakura. Yeah. Why was it there? What was up with it? And why did they not talk about it afterwards? It was just there. I have a very obvious explanation for this. Because... Um, if you guys know the ending, 
then this uh, whole uh, island is supposed to uh, rehabilitate. Uh, what, what do you call it? Rehabilitate. Can somebody help me with this word? Rehabilitate. Re yeah, thank you. Rehabilitate uh, these ultimate despairs. And who who else is better to motivate people than uh, Sakuragami in person, or in this case, <laughs> as a statue? So uh, when they walked into this room, they'd see a huge. Uh, Very symbolic. Statue. Yeah, and it's like, wow, look at this ultimate hope right there. We can be like her, a buff giant ogre, and so everybody. <laughs> I'm like her. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So yeah, I don't know. I, my my reasoning is that that's just it's there as a symbol of hope, and it was there before the programming got corrupted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe cool, it's cool, uh, cool. Monokuma's way to like uh, pay tribute to the ogre that fought him at one point in the first <laughs> yeah. game. So okay, okay. Uh, one last thing about chapter four. Um, I love this about the second game, and that's um, they are delving into these really nice um, topics, like the things happening outside of the uh, the real game. Um, in chapter four out of six, instead of chapter five out of five, like in the first game, um, you get a lot of more time to think about like the bigger picture and everything. In the second game, um, the first one was getting really really interesting, and then it was just it just ended, you know? Yeah. But uh, the second game, you got three chapters to think about that kind of stuff, so that was amazing for me. Hmm. I do agree. It gives you a bit more time. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely true. I uh, I really see that. Because in, in the first game, you basically got, like, all of the crucial information just, like, the second before yeah, you Yeah, it, it was finally getting interesting, and that, then the game was over. Yeah. That's why I kind of like I I love the game, you know, and it every time I talk about Danganronpa One, it sounds like I don't like it, and I'm sorry for that. But the thing is, I I do like it a lot, but I'm very disappointed by the ending, and I don't know. It's like us, but I really really wanted game. more from the first game, and I got that in the second game, so I'm super happy. The overall uh, impression of Danganronpa One and Two is is amazing for me, but the the second game was what did it for me. I'm gonna ask you a question. Maybe I should save this for later. But you guys have to remind me because I gotta ask Senkai if the, uh, the uh, with the inclusion of the second game, if the first game's ending became stronger. And you don't have to answer this now. We can probably get into this later. Uh, when I we didn't really get the question, so let's save it for later. <laughs> you, you didn't, okay, did Mike get the question? So the ending of the first game got better because of the second game. Yeah. Not at all. Okay, good. That's that's all I need. It might to know. even got worse, you know. What? Okay, well, we'll just discuss it later because I want to talk. To the, like when we discuss all the details, it's much easier to. Kyoko's gloss are off. It's time to get into a fist fight. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, but okay, I uh, I think it's time to move on to the the fifth case, which we don't even need to discuss, right? Well, why? But, uh, the best case. It's the best of all, right? You can just move along, like you know. This is why you play Danganronpa 2, oh. because of chapter 5. Oh, oh, well. All right. But all guys, right. I have to go to the toilet, so what about the 5 minute break? Okay, so I'm back. I thought this was a 5 minute break, not a 6 minute break. Or a 6 second break. Awesome. Or whatever. Let's get back right all into right. it. Alright, so chapter 5. Chapter 5. The what best you? chapter of the all. And we're skipping it, right? No, no, of no. course not. All right, good. So fuck yeah, this was the best chapter. It was so short, but it had such a great mystery and such. Like, was it short though? Action. Because you said that to me before I got to it, and when I got to it, it we kept on going forever. But it was extremely short. Hmm. Because it was so awesome, I didn't put it down. Yeah, no, me neither. Awesome. I just played it. I I just played, basically played chapter two, three, four, and five, one day each. But with chapter 5, I was like, hold it. <laughs> I'm going to continue playing before I get oh. eating and stuff like that. I was just sucked into it. Yeah, I, it a... I played chapter 5 and 6. Uh, the beginning of 5 until uh, the end of the game, basically. Um, from like late in the evening to I don't know when in the night. But uh, mm. I, I, I really I couldn't stop playing because... Um, 
I played with my headset on and everything and it was it was like pitch black in my room. I didn't know what time it was, but I really wanted to finish the game, you know. Uh, yeah. It was a great experience, really. Right. But I, I don't know why I thought it felt short. Maybe it was because I played through chapter 4, 5, and 6, like, back to back. Yeah, you did that, right. But uh, maybe... but No, I just... I don't know. Maybe it's just because it was so intense. And uh, it wasn't, like... It wasn't as eventful as the other chapters, because, like... It, sure, the things that happened in the chapter were way cooler and way better than any of the other chapters, in my opinion. Uh, but there weren't as many things going on. Like you basically just no. Had the investigation was really short. Yeah, that's the one I was referring to, I guess. And uh, and the trial was very very weird. I have to ask you guys, like the thing with the spear. Yeah. <laughs> I saw <laughs> that cool. coming from like forever. Yeah, I really Only felt me? that he. I really felt that he was, you know, doing this to himself. Mm. Like I, I mean, the reason? thing where where there was no blood on the fingertips, and you saw the rope, and you saw the spear. I, it was yeah. obvious. I, I figured it out, it <laughs> out so easy, um, but then again, the characters have to figure it out, and that's what's interesting, really. Uh, it's not like you're not playing to figure out yourself. You want to see how the character reacts to it. So. I just wanted to know why Nagito committed suicide at that point. Yeah. Because it was yeah. such a mystery. Like why? And he also like showed this sudden change again of character, where he like didn't care about anything in chapter four. Like he he looked at everyone with despise because of what he found out in that uh, in that folder. Yeah. In chapter four. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I I don't know I, I just I don't I just wanted to know what Nagito's deal was, and uh, he couldn't tell us because he was dead. So. I was very disappointed to see to see him dead though, uh, because I this again comes to my my theory of what was going on. I, it was a little really shocked, but then chapter five, that whole investigation and trial, uh, that's and then the best part for me is how it ties into chapter six when that's the best part about the ending on that makes chapter five even stronger to see why Nagito did this stuff. Yeah, you know? and. Uh, you know, just just as that when he found out, you know, about the remnants of the spare, and he was like, "Yeah, these we don't deserve to live except for the spy." Yeah, I was like, "Fuck yeah, this character is so awesome." But that was so backwards, though, like his reasoning, because um, so if I remember this right, because we had a discussion about this, you and me, Mike, earlier. Okay. Um, so he didn't want to kill the spy, right? Yeah. But then in the trial. Everybody depended on his luck to point out that the killer was the spy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what's the deal with that? Then he then shouldn't he have accounted for that fact when he died? Because it's totally backwards. Like that's a really glaring pothole. Pothole and like yeah. I know there's a lot of potholes and I'm I'm I easily ignore them a lot of times because I just want to ignore. I mean, have fun with the game. Uh, but. Th that one in particular felt sort of weird, and uh, like there's no two ways about it. Like sometimes I can sort of pretend there's a reason why a plot hole happens, but this was just really hard. Uh, remind me again, what was the plot hole? Uh, that Nagito's luck made it so that uh, uh, Shikai, uh, Sh Shiaki, yeah, yeah, Shiaki uh, through the. Um, what the poisonous it? grenade. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, exactly. The grenade. Yeah. And so, but if he wanted to save Shiaki because she wasn't an ultimate despair, uh, then why would his luck make it so that she threw it and thus getting well, killed? Because he he felt that by do by setting this up that everybody threw the grenades, they could never solve it. So nobody was able to actually figure out who actually threw it. Thus, they couldn't point out yeah, the killer exactly. and point to each other and then Chiaki would have gone free I However, thought that was the Hajime, whole thing yeah that was the whole thing how they set it up until but, Hajime brought up the point like hey he is the ultimate lucky guy so he would have relied on the one throwing and that's how they actually figured out it was Chiaki and so it was actually, actually it wasn't really luck it was just like a wild guess 
and turns out she actually was the one. So they actually yeah. have like w one in five chance of getting wrong. Precisely, yeah. So they're they're both. I think it, you can interpret it as both. You know, it can be a one part plot hole and one part. You know, it was the way he set it up, but just not completely perfect. Yeah. But uh, just you know, just the way how how that whole uh, situation got down was uh, was was you know that that final part of the chapter five. You know, to to have to acknowledge that Chucky was going to be executed as well. Yeah. And then they actually showed that execution video where she was running away, and I was thinking, "Hey, this is going to be like Danganronpa One, where <laughs> they they actually where Makoto actually got away with it." Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, you know, nope. but no, she was <laughs> she was really gone. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So I guess uh, yeah, it makes it feel a bit easier to think about it that way, the way you explained it. Yeah, that's how I got it anyway. Yeah. I don't really mind it to be honest. It's not like I I hate anything like that. But the <laughs> I just was gonna mention the Tetris thing was <laughs> so, oh, <yeah>. so fun. <laughs> that was really awesome. Uh, it's horrible to die like that. It's just uh, <laughs> getting trapped between two walls and just like, washed from the top. Yeah, that's. Uh... And then but... uh, you know he got a Tetris. <laughs> and yeah, it, it exploded. <laughs> They they have some really really in, in, inventive ways to uh, to do the stuff that happens on screen. Yeah. But Those yeah. cutscenes look so good though. Yeah. Yeah, the CG cutscenes are especially awesome. They always much remember. better than the animation, the 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 animated uh, the, or the anime version of Danganronpa One, which looks very bad. Yeah, but I think they use the CG cutscenes for the executions, don't they? In the yeah. anime. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I've only watched yeah, obviously. two episodes or so. Yeah. I haven't watched it at all. I want to do so, but I don't know when. When or why, but just out of curiosity, Maybe I guess. Maybe refresh your memory for, yeah. like, Danganronpa 3. Yeah. Yeah. I got a very, very high urge to play the second game on PSP. I don't know why, but I really want to do that sometime. I was actually so, thinking about that too with the first and second game as well. So maybe, maybe I should watch the anime and then play the second game on PSP when the, th but that the when the third game is coming out. Right? Yeah, it's Francis Francis. The second one as well. I yeah, really didn't both. know, but when I was uh, looking around uh, for the soundtrack on YouTube, I actually found a playthrough when someone was playing it with. Uh, this uh, fan translation, I was very surprised because what well, how long has that been out? It's been out since forever. It's like Are you serious? Came, yeah, it just came out. Because I read they oh. they stopped the translation whenever they heard yeah, it was getting localized. And now there's a fan translation for it? The, the wow. first translation came out and then like two weeks later they announced, hey, we're going to be doing a localization and then the guys were like, the fan translators were like, yeah, fuck the second game then. Yeah, that's no, what I read in a way. I was pretty sure it was out for a while before the second game. <laughs> I should have just played it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If that was the case, then why did I wait so long? Yeah, I feel the same. The second translation that keeps, like, you know, keeps in mind all those other translation parts from the first game. Yeah. I don't know. But, but, but yeah, holy shit, that, that fifth case. Man. Can I just mention something real quick before we keep talking about the fifth case? Because yeah, I sure. don't want to forget this. I love I love in the unlocalized part, uh, like or the title Danganronpa. The first one is called Danganronpa, but then the second one is called Super Danganronpa. Two, so, like there's a Super Danganronpa one. Yeah, exactly. No, Which no, is Super weird. Danganronpa two. So it's like Danganronpa and then Super Danganronpa two, and so the third one would obviously obviously be called Hyper Danganronpa two three or Danganronpa, Danganronpa sixty four. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay. Good timing. Because if if that's gonna happen, like if they make a Dang at Rampa 364, then uh, the English version just lost a chance of a lifetime. You know what's weird though? Uh, I when I was looking at my Vita collection and I saw that um, the first game is called Trigger Happy Havoc Dang and Rampa, and the second game is called Dang and Rampa 2 Goodbye Despair. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. weird. Yeah, it's a bit. I, 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 yeah. I just uh, like this, Excel this sheets, I just named them Danganronpa One and Danganronpa Two <laughs> because the first game is called Trigger Happy Havoc, and then it has a little little font saying Danganronpa if you would like, but the game is actually called Trigger Happy Havoc over here. Yeah, that's 
That's yeah, true. I think Miss America realized their mistake and just called <laughs> yeah. the second game, you know, Danganronpa. Yeah. yeah pe- people just wouldn't stop calling it Danganronpa, I guess. So they were like, yeah, might as well just cave in, call it that too. Yeah. Oh, well, that's just what I wanted to say about Danganronpa. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Let's keep going over the fifth case, I guess. But yeah, for me it's done. I, I love the fifth case. It, it was the the best part for me of the game. If that was the ending, it could have stopped right there. Yeah, it would have been great. And, uh, I I would have I, I would have loved it more, honestly. Hmm. But then they had to remove a lot of stuff that happened before, because I would go nuts otherwise. Yeah, there's and a that's, lot of that's what made the sixth, sixth case so good for me because I was just waiting for for that case in particular the whole game. When it finally came, I was so happy that it wasn't short or anything. That it was a whole case about it. So that's what I've been waiting to say for this whole time. But let's get to yeah. the sixth case. All right, let, let me let me start with the sixth case because I I think out of the three of us, I I dislike it the most. Okay. So I'm going to break it down to the stuff that I like the most about it. Let's right, get cool. to it. And that is of course the first part where you're actually in the school and it's all glitched out, and you start unraveling things. Yeah, and you had that that a very awesome uh, uh, Nagito on the boat, chapter yeah. zero zero thing. Mm, yeah, that oh was yeah. Awesome. I really enjoyed it until I saw stuff happening and we got the hints out of that eight bit part, and I had the feeling, oh my god, where are we going? And then the trial happened. So you didn't you didn't know about that before? Well. The the remnants of the spare thing? No, the the whole it's a game thing. No, I, I was I was figuring it was going to be a simulation. Yeah. Okay, uh, because I I, I kind of knew that from <laughs> the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, it was obvious. And I was just waiting for it to be, to for them to realize you know the characters. But okay, go on, go on. Yeah. Now the simulation thing, uh, I was expecting. I I didn't really catch that from the beginning though, to be honest. But hmm. uh. Um, I was expecting it, especially when it started glitching out, of course. Uh, and you know, I had my theory, which could have still became a reality, especially because it was a simulation, and certain characters were gone. But then they started talking about the remnants of despair. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, when they started explaining that these characters were in the simulation, and they did a lot of bad stuff because of M- Miss Enoshima. I somehow, and then to aggravate that whole, they revealed who Hajime really is. I then and there lost pretty much all sympathy for the cast of Danganronpa 2. Yeah. Hmm. And was really disappointed by the ending. And when they just rolled on not only the reveal of Hajime, but also showed a character that I really enjoyed in the first game, but I had really did not want her to show up again in this way and, and shape I was like I'm sorry for five and a half chapters this game was absolutely great I really love seeing the f- three characters from the first game again but you know fuck hmm. the Danganronpa 2 cast and I have no idea how they're going to tie this into Danganronpa 3 yeah I Let's agree see. especially about the cast like you just lost so much sympathy for them when you realized how horrible they actually were before they got in there and uh, like it was such a strange turn of events, where like people. But they used... weren't like that from from the get go, you know. Yeah, but it they were turned into that. It doesn't forgive like for what they did because they they even like emphasize it so much in the ending, like, oh, you guys fucking raped and killed and your families are dead because of you, and fuck, and like, well, sh- man, I I don't want to f- like associate myself with these guys anymore. No, but you yeah. know that that was just like a part of their life due to the school and all the horrible things. I. I... I yeah, it's think because that was how uh, Yunko, Yunko set that up. Yeah. Uh, and of course, something can be said because of the simulation. They got referred it back into the state before it. You know, how can you actually, going by minority report rules, how can you declare somebody guilty without actually having committed a murder yet? But when they also said that the people in the simulation, their bodies were still mutilated and crappy and stuff like that, yeah. uh, they were lying in those tanks, I was like, Nah, I'm not really feeling it. And then Junko came back, and it, it all of a sudden, for me personally, I, I re- was really paying attention, but it got 
extremely confusing right there when she was telling like this is the option that you can do you can push the button yes or no and this is what happens and then two minutes later no 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 this is what happens if you push the button yes or no this is what happens and I got really confused and I was like hmm no at that point, I'm not actually, really feeling it I knew what she wanted to do but I think there was at one point where you actually had to choose yourself like okay so should you push to repeat the whole simulation or should you like you had, you had like three options and then I didn't really I didn't know what to push because I didn't know what uh, what option would give me basically so I didn't know what the right answer was at that point so I guess I, from that perspective I was a bit confused too huh. but it didn't matter what you pushed right because in the end they, they didn't do anything no no there were just wrong answers I um, I, f I felt that I knew what was right from uh, at that chapter and I really knew what I wanted to do for hope and for justice you know but I did I did save actually and tried <laughs> to press the other just to see, but yeah. uh, you don't do, you just get to to do it right. But that's so weird for me to hear because I I love that part and the thing was there are so many weird or crazy things in the Danganronpa franchise that just don't make any sense at all, like Mon Monokuma appearing everywhere, you know. Um, to know that's not for real feels good to me and I I like how <laughs> how I just got to think that oh this this wasn't real so that's fine I don't have to worry about plot holes or anything like that the game was still great and See, that's exactly why I don't like it and also um, the last part where they everyone knew like this is a game cool let's let's do it and they just went crazy because there was nothing to hold back anymore he turned Super Saiyan Junko came back. I that was just awesome to me. I loved it because there's no way to hold back on really really cool stuff like that when when there are no rules left, you know. So I just thought that was amazing and since since it got wrapped up really nicely after that and uh, you also got to see the the character from the first game and everything and I don't know. I I was very positive about it. And also as I said, uh since you saw the door um in the beginning of the game like how you enter enter a game yeah it was uh, this background from a television and everything uh, it felt felt very the game starts and uh, the characters were very 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 um almost too good compared to the ones from the first game and also uh the game was glitchy from the start there was these uh, glitchy things yeah, yeah, in the like first the chapter, then. like it was in yeah. the last, so I knew I knew what was going on, and I was just waiting for it. And what I really, what would make me very very sad was that they, if they, if this was a plot twist, and I knew it from the start, and they would just reveal it, and then the game would end, I would be so disappointed. But instead, I got a whole chapter of this that I've been waiting for the whole game. I just wanted to uh, let the characters know it, and when they did. I got a, a whole case with a investigation and also a trial and for me that was amazing really because uh, since I knew it from the start I would be so it would be such a letdown if they just had it as the plot twist for the game and then it would end so I'm very happy how it turned out because they couldn't really made it any better for me I still believe that because it was all simulation all like just as you said, you, you thought it made but it was, all the it, was, it wasn't good. all simulation, you know, it was for a reason and it was for the bigger picture. It was very important. Everything there was very important. I'm it, still it wasn't, that, it wasn't the that they just trash it, you know? No, but I'm saying that all the plot like relevant stuff gets undermined because it's a... Uh, like, no, none of the twists matter anymore because they can't... But, they but it have does. Been, like, they, no, because they could have done anything. That's the thing, like... If it's a simulation, then they could have done everything. And so, like, anything they come up with will be undermined, because everything is possible. It's just no, such but a, like, not, it's a that's, that's not how it works, you know? Still, yeah, well, I'm still saying, this is my opinion, I'm just saying that it's a cop-out... It's a cop-out excuse, basically. It's like an excuse that can explain everything. No, I, I really so don't not, feel it, that it, way. It, well, I, I, I just feel like... I, I'm sorry about. for you, but <laughs> that's not how I got the ending. Well, I'm not trying to argue with your opinion, I'm just saying... Okay, that. okay, cool. Hmm. This point, this point, no, just, no, but it's interesting to hear, you know, because... Uh, yeah, I, I agree, I was a little bit let down by the ending, but... 
I can I can see what you're going for that you that you enjoyed it being that it resolved everything. Um, yeah, because I had this yeah. this bad feeling. I was waiting for for basically the whole game just to know if uh, how they would um, explain the whole it's being a game thing, and I was so worried it would be bad. But then it was actually really good a reveal because mm. I was expecting the reveal from the beginning. So for me, it was it was good. Really. Yeah, I can see it. I didn't see the reveal, or I wasn't expecting that it was a simulation at first. Um, of course, when Chapter 6 started, I uh, I had that idea. But uh, Another thing that I was so happy about was that when things started to get that way in the first game, they just rushed it over and finished it. And here, we got a whole case about it. They explained everything very, very detailed. Uh, you could press a lot of more things than you had to in that investigation and get to know so many things. And I did that. I read I read everything, and it was very very interesting and super detailed. So that felt it felt like the creators did a very good job on that case, and I was very happy with it. But that's just me, unfortunately. <laughs> so... No, no, you're definitely not the only one. I was speaking to a couple of people that that really liked how Danganronpa 2 you know just kind of wrapped up the in- both games into one. Um, and I, I see it a little bit different, and I think just, and I I, I did a you know a, on my own video about a while back just when I finished it. I think it has to do with how I was thinking and the the theory that I had behind behind the game, which um, it played out a little bit similar. Uh, what I was expecting from Danganronpa 2 at first, seeing how Nagito, I was thinking that that was Makoto. Yeah. Uh, I thought that Byakuya was going to be Byakuya himself. Yeah, and, right, right. Uh, I, I also thought that Teko was going to be Toko. Um, and uh, Akane really? as well. I, I don't know, the, the, the red awesome. eyes and everything. I, yeah, I, okay, I, I cool. felt that she was similar. But they so might do was... that in the third game. Wouldn't <laughs> that be the coolest thing? That, that yeah. The double twist. Yeah, I have, I have no idea what, what the... Well, in, the third game, there's there's many things. That they would can be go amazing for. if the guys inside the capsules are actually the guys from the first game. Yeah, that that would yeah, I don't know. That's that. There there there's a lot of options to go for. But what I was thinking that Denken Rompa two, the the cast was a lot of new characters. They would throw in some spies or survivors from the first game, and what I was thinking is that both Monami and Monokuma they were controlled by Kyoko uh, which uh, also was one of my favorite game uh, characters from the first game and the whole thing here was not that it's a simulation per se but it was another game because they talked a lot about broadcasting this to people outside yeah. in the first game hmm. I thought that the survivors actually set this up to show that uh, this was all to showcase uh, and that hope is more important than despair and that you know, it indeed was kind of like a, a simulation or experiment. And I was honestly, I I wanted to go for the good cop out ending where they revealed that the good guys were behind this all, even the bad stuff. Uh, it's it's all resolved. Nobody really died because you know Biakia, you know he, he wasn't really dead, and the people that got executed weren't really executed. Um, and that's basically the end of the second game and everything leading up to it even with Nagito I, I really felt that he was Makoto and just pushing the the, the, the cast and a new cast just to the edge to to set up you know the whole finish us all and I had such a strong belief that that was going to be the, the main twist and theory behind it that when they actually revealed you know the Izuru part, the remnants of despair, and Yunko being returned. I felt additionally extra disappointed by that because it was not only my theory coming through, but also something completely different that I was disappointed by. Now I really feel you a lot more, and I really understand. <laughs> yeah. I understand a lot and more now. And also, that's a very good story. You should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and write the, the semi sequel to Danganronpa. <laughs> That's just a fan. I'm 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 Hifu. I'm the <laughs> ultimate fan <laughs> creator. How could you think of these great stories, man? Maybe you... you should create Zero Escape Three. Yeah, maybe. Oh, no. You know what? Not just maybe. Definitely, you should go <laughs> out there. 
and well, I don't know. It's, characters. That is uh, Zero Escape is uh, the something that I, I and this is something that that's, together with Zero Escape and Deng and Rompa, uh, there's a lot of these series going on that just know from the start what they are going for, and they all resolve it very well into one. Yeah. And yeah. I, I sadly didn't get that from from the end of Deng and Rompa two. That is not to say that you know with another episode, which uh, by now I think we all know that that's taking place in between one and two. Mm. They can set it up for a inevitable third game, where I still hope that the survivors of one, the survivors of two, in some strange, very hard to explain way, because it was a simulation, and the survivors of another episode all got to get get together into one final killing game. I really want to see that. That would that would be great. But and I'm pretty still, sure we will. Yeah, I, I think so. But still, it's very hard for me to see how they are going to pick the Danganronpa 2 characters. But they were going back to the life, island, yeah. right? Yeah, but if they? They, if they do this, if they do the simulation, well, basically what happened was they stayed in the simulation in the hope to restore their bodies with their island simulation minds. Yeah. But it is it's for me it's that's the toughest part about the ending of Danganronpa 2 is how I how I cannot see how they are going to put those characters back outside of the simulation and put them in the real world so to say. For uh, for me I felt like uh, at the ending you saw the boat and everything you know. And yeah, right after the credits um, in real time you you started playing the island game you know where you're social link and everything. And that was what happened after the credits, you know, because they were going back to the island, and from there they get to know each other from the start again, with a bit of a different social links and everything. So that's what happens in before the third game. <laughs> or is that just me? I didn't consider it. Because mm, they were going weird. back and doing everything again, except for the killing, to recreate their memories. That and that's that's, that's the sense. whole good good ending, you know. That is that is interesting. Maybe the island mode will, will reveal but something. Why, why did the it end. show the the boats otherwise? Because they were going back to the island. That's what I thought. Because they were. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think yeah. it was the Future Foundation just leaving the island. I, I was thinking they were still oh, inside really? the simulation, and they were just taking the boat to go outside of the simulation. Huh. And that's how I interpreted it. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I, interesting, interesting. We have like three different interpretations of this ending. Um, another thing I just want to say that um, I think uh, what also makes me understand uh, how disappointed you get is because um, compared to how my predictions, the game was even better. But compared to your predictions, it was worse. So that's why I'm so happy about the game because I was expecting... Um, pretty much how it turned out, but a little bit worse, and it was even better than that for me, so that's awesome, but for you, yeah. like, your story was really good, <laughs> so I was I expecting see. nothing, and I got nothing, so okay. I'm supposed to be happy, but I'm not, so but That's very that's unlike you, though, so I'm yeah. very confused now, but <laughs> I, I just and, and don't get me wrong, it's not that I hate Dang and Rampa 2 at all, it's, it's just, you know, it, it's still, it is still one of my favorite games of the year, it's still really fantastic, and we're talking about you know, like 9.4 versus 9.6. But when you get so attached to certain games and stories and characters, you know, I, I maybe I sound, I sound a little bit rough on the game, but I really I loved it, and especially the whole journey part, just the five and a half chapters, and that it kept you guessing mm -hmm. through whatever is going on and who did what, and that whole mystery. That 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 whole journey part for me was more important than the actual destination. The and report wasn't the most pleasing, it's just, but I liked everything else in between. Hmm. But it feels like maybe if if I did get like a better reward in the end, it would have made things so much better. And there was there were even other parts in the ending that I wasn't too fond of. I think like uh, throwing in Makoto and the whole future foundation, uh, like the way they were forcing you to either believe in hope or despair. I, I really like, th there was one thing I did like actually. Um, I didn't like the part where they were forcing you to do what, like one or the other, but then when they actually took their own path, they were like, 
we're not gonna choose either hope or despair. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Something. That was really good because I I, nice. I I really thought that Makoto and Kyo, uh, Kyoko and uh, Byakuya were like really like forcing you to believe in hope, like they're, like forcing it down your throat, and you're like, whoa, wait, I don't want to believe in hope either if you're gonna be this way, you know? Because like it's like they're two really strong beliefs, and you have to part uh, like part with one of them. Yeah, but I just couldn't do it, and I I like that the character actually chose their own path in the end. Yeah, that's awesome, really. There, there's there's one more thing about the entire game which I was also disappointed about. What was up with Fat Biakia? I know he was the ultimate imposter. <laughs> Why was he there? What was up? What was going to be his motive for appearing as Biakia? Like, is this something that is not yet revealed for some reason? For yeah, him, I don't no. know, but for the creators, it was because Byakuya was, like, the smartest one in the first game, and he should have, like, made it to the second round. That's how I felt it. But that was, like, a creator's choice, not not the, the guy who actually cosplayed as him. I don't actually, know I don't know his that. reason, but the reason they put it in the game, like, the creators, that feels very natural to me, because he was... Yeah. He was supposed to survive, you know. <laughs> but, I'm not sure uh, if it was in the file or if they, uh, there were there was some point where they mentioned why he he didn't disclose who he was, and it was basically because he like didn't have a choice. That's the way he lived his life all the time, and why they chose Byakuya out of all people. That's like anybody's guess, but he was supposed to like not show his true identity, because that's who he is by default. He can't show his identity. Even his papers didn't say anything of who he was. And Monokuma explained that he just he just shouldn't show his true self because that's who yeah. he is the ultimate imposter. He doesn't have a home. He doesn't have like anything. Okay. Well, it, it, it was, I haven't um, because he perishes so quickly. I haven't uh, social linked him. Oh. So uh, there's maybe something that I missed out. Whoa! I totally forget about that. You can actually social link him. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think about that at all. He's probably just going to talk about himself as Byakuya though. Just to throw you off, but that's still yeah, interesting. Precisely. Wow, I gotta get back to that game. There might be some some nice uh, some hints or something, and who knows? Maybe there's just like a s small mystery that they they will reveal later on. In what I think is uh, another game, at despite how Danganronpa 2 ended, I want to see a third game, but I really really want to play another episode. Because it looks really, really cool. I've seen the thir opening thirty minutes. Yeah. And wow. I'm, um, Seriously. Pretty much sold. I feel yeah. Ever since the first second I saw it, I thought it was gonna be a great game. Like. So I, I've I've always been stoked for it, and uh, like even now I also seen like the first few minutes about uh, from it, and it looks really, really cool. They blend a lot of cool uh, art styles together, and like the the stages look fun, and there's a lot of different tools you could use to fight the enemies. It just looks really fun, like like a really good, uh, like a solid action game at least. Right Third now position. I'm very hyped for it as well because of uh, the story, I think it uh, will be really really good. The thing was at first I was uh, referring, uh, I was comparing the game to something like uh, uh, Tales of the Heroes or like a spin-off title of other games where it has absolutely nothing to do with the real deal, like maybe Cro Project Cross Zone or you know yeah. other other games like that which are which doesn't have absolutely anything to do with the real deal but uh ever since the game has showed more and more interesting stuff and now i think the game will have a great story um on its own but also related to the the real games yeah so that's going to be awesome yeah it's it's uh, i have to be straight up honest i uh, you, you got to be very careful uh, when you start doing with this uh, researching another episode or like even Dang and Rumpa stuff because there's people posting a lot of spoilers. I know, I know of two things which get revealed pretty quickly, I believe, in a game. Mm. Mm. Uh, so luckily, but still, that's that's pretty crappy. That's um, why I try not to read up on things yeah. that I haven't I haven't played at all. So P please don't, please don't, well, because I, I the, you know the, the trailer alone gives you know the trailer alone gives one character away, um, but. I'm I I I I've read about this game having a really proper story and you know adding it all in 
um, with the whole major tragedy part and the stuff that goes uh, goes bad, you know, in the in the real world, how bad it goes. And uh, cool, cool. I really look forward to it, and the gameplay looks really nice with this sort of puzzle-based third-person shooter. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. And now we just have to hope that Miss America actually goes out and localizes it. Yeah. Would it because surprise you if they didn't? I guess it's the Vita's uh, how the Vita is right now here in the West. But I think they're gonna. They do will. It. They will for sure. They will do it. Yeah, I, I I'm about ninety percent sure they'll go for it. Danganronpa one and two sold really well, and I think it's a good series for for Miss America because they they do a lot of RPGs, and they don't really have a visual novel series. And I think this one will do them very nicely. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. So we should probably wrap this up sometime soon. Is there anything else, Danganronpa, we want to talk about? I guess I just want to mention that from from the first moment I saw another episode, uh, I knew it was going to be what it like is now, I guess. Because I, I figured it was going to be this great story, like a Danganronpa game, but just with uh, different gameplay mechanics like shooting and stuff but it's going to have the same story and everything and I guess uh, when you first saw it you didn't get that impression of course so yeah. I now understand why you were a bit skeptical at first but yeah I, I have no reason to be so now though I'm really looking forward to it but it was just back then <laughs> that's it and uh, I mean I, I love this series it's great to uh, have uh, jumped into it earlier this year and yeah, I feel I'm like a lot of things have, have happened between uh, the two games as well. I'm so happy it went so fast. It all went so yeah. fast, and it's really good because the first game came out, and now now we have finished the second one. It feels yeah great. So much story that we've gotten so far and everything, and it's like I, I remember when I was reviewing the game back in like what was it March or something? Yeah, could you believe we would have the second game so fast? Yeah, it was inc incredible, incredible, and I was waiting for it and everything, and it just appeared. So that's nice. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's really cool to say that, that there there's another great visual novel series and just a series in general that I really invested in. And I can just add to my favorites list and get hyped up for new games. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, re really been a great year, and uh, to no surprise, both games are at the top of my game of the year list. Right, they're just uh, fantastic. Definitely. Now we just need to wait for uh, number three and uh, another episode, which might take a bit longer than the second game did. So. Yeah, it uh, will for sure, <laughs> but it will be worth the while. Maybe we can have more discussions or something in the meantime until. <laughs> yeah, maybe we will find out some more things about the first and second game. We will. Uh, what we should do is play, like finish the game, do all the side content at yeah. the island, complete the social links, and then maybe talk about it some more. It could be fun. Yeah. I did do the school mode in the first game. Yeah. I don't know if you guys did it, but uh, I, I did for a bit. I didn't complete it or anything, but I didn't even touch it. If if you if you finish it, it is it is really nice because it gives you a great uh, hint at the second game. Wow. Oh. Well, cool. another. Not a crazy hint or something, but it shows one of the characters. Ooh, which one was it? Uh, they uh, they they show Monami at the end. Oh, she awesome. makes an appearance uh, nice. where she's like, "Hey, I'm I'm here as well, and uh, I'll bring you to a tropical island or something." <laughs> which was uh, which at, at the time it was of course the school mode was thrown in specifically for the Vita version, so one and two were already out. Oh, yeah. I see. So it's not like a major epic twist or something but it was a nice thing they threw in there very it's cool it's kind of like this it's kind of like this this uh, sort of resource uh, you know you have to gather your resources over all the characters and they have to find items and you gotta manage it something it's kind of like this this resource management game yeah that's cool while in the meantime you can do free time events and you can match up with a character and if you do it really well and you match up with one of the characters, hmm. they give you their panties. Yeah. yeah. Nice <laughs> but they do in the second game, too. I yeah. think in all of the games, they give you underpants when you finish their social link. So. It's the best part. You know, Senkai has the art book. If you take the sleeve off and you turn it to the back, it shows you, like, all characters' yeah. panties. <laughs> I saw that at the start of this uh, podcast, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> So that's really hilarious. So don't uh, do anything too kinky now, Senkai. No. Promise. You promise not. But not until Bayonetta uh, 2 is guys, released. Uh, 
how would you guys be up for a, say a, uh, a a spin-off game where it's like the whole cast of one and two in the same killing game but it's just story wise a little bit different just like a what if scenario a yeah, crossover like, game unrelated. yeah it's like a fan service game where they just put all the cool guys together I, nice. I'd love it yeah and they could, it could even be like a, like it could be unrelated to the murder stuff too just see them interact together would be fun yeah, just to, to throw up like a massive simulation or something. I, I, I think that they might go for it. Not another simulation, man. I can't take it. <laughs> well, they have to explain it somehow. And, you know, yeah, with, yeah, with, with other games, it's very easy. Like Steins Gate, you can just say, hey, different uh, different timeline or something. Yeah, yeah. But here, it's just, you know. But this, if it's going to be unrelated, then it could be like totally unrelated from anything. And they could just like meet up, but still have their all like personalities and stuff. Yeah, there's definitely some characters I would like to see square off. Or or maybe, maybe this is just getting very far ahead. Arc System Works meets uh, Dan and Rompa. Ooh, wow. Maybe. You got it. <laughs> Genocide Jill yeah. versus Peko. I'm, I'm, I'm down. And then we have a, like an Atlas crossover with uh, Spike Chunsoft, and we get a Dan and Rompa JRPG. Oh Jesus! Oh, awesome. And then Zero Escape meets Dang and Rope. Oh, that the 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 possibilities are endless here. Wouldn't you love to see the Nine and Nine cast do the Dang and Rompa game? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that would be pretty nuts. That would actually be no. The, I, I take it back. That would actually be the best uh, setup. It's like all the cast of Nine and Nine, Virtuous Last Reward, Dang and Rompa One and Two, into one massive. Killing game. What if they did the Street Fighter thing? So they do one game with the 99 cast do the Danganronpa game, and one game with the Danganronpa cast do the Zero <laughs> Escape game. Oh, yeah. Like so Street two Fighter two different Tekken, games. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. And then one of them never got released. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably the Zero Escape one, because... <laughs> oh. Fuck. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh. But yeah, well, we... Really hope that we should that wrap we this up now. But yeah. yeah. I love Danganronpa, guys. It's great. Yeah, yeah. amazing Definitely. stuff. And it's it's fun to play, it's fun to watch, and just fun to discuss like this. But yeah, I, I'm glad we got to share our opinions about this. <laughs> Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. It was really, really fun. I hope you all enjoyed. So, uh, And make sure to leave comments as well. Um, like, we discussed all three of us for a lot now, but it would be nice to hear your thoughts as well. Yeah. Share your opinions so. with our opinions, and then we can just put them in a package and send them to everyone. Send them to Aero, that's where you send stuff. And all oh, I yeah. want to know is should I get hired to write the Danganronpa games or not? Yeah. Well, yeah, we did want you to make the Zero Escape game, but I guess Danganronpa will be fine. Cool, so are you ready, guys? Yes, let's just end this already. Until end next time. Get gaming. Get gaming. You too. Mike. All right, get game. Come on. Woo! Get yeah. Oh, get gaming. Okay. Yeah. I will. Awesome. All right. See you guys later. Take care. Bye. -bye.